Welcome to South Everly, Mervac's newest flagship project. South Everly comprises of nine buildings across 14 hectares and will be home to 18,000 people once complete. When Mervac acquired South Everly back in December 2015, we wanted to create a neighbourhood, a place where the community felt as equally its home as the workers that came here every day. We hope you enjoyed the tour. Follow along with us today across four key locations with Uma Springford at the Locomotive Workshop, Terry Ezra at CBA and Clarence Slocky on the rooftop farm at Giawa. But first, let's catch up with Kylie Kwong outside the community building. I'm here with Kylie Kwong at South Everly. Kylie is South Everly's ambassador. It's, a, it's actually quite a, a nice story how Kylie came to, uh, to South Everly. I was having dinner at, uh, at Billy Kwong's, Kylie's um, restaurant, and, uh, and really, Kylie, our friendship grew from there. And it became very evident that the values of South Everly and Mervac were very much aligned with, uh, with your values. Cooking for me is not just about putting delicious food on a plate, it goes far deeper than that. It's about being able to connect community with stories, with the people behind the food. And in that way, we chefs can become very powerful in our food, food language. For the last 10 years, I've been integrating local native ingredients into my Australian Chinese food uh, to offer an authentic and meaningful version of Australian Chinese cuisine. What I'm going to be doing here is I'll be opening up a little eatery in Locomotive Street. I'll be using the native edible plants from the rooftop garden and through doing that I'll be able to tell the story of South Everly but most importantly it's a way that I as a chef can pay and offer my respect and acknowledgement to Australia's First Nations people. South Everly, I mean it sits within this amazing neighbourhood with all of the incredible Aboriginal communities, the amazing community organisations. It's a very rich, diverse and multicultural community and I really love being a part of that. One of the main aims of my ambassadorship as I see it is, as you said, this is, this is not a business park, this is like an extension of the neighbourhood. So for me it's very much about making those connections and bringing the heart and soul. So all of our neighbours and organisations feel as if South Everly is, a, is, is theirs to use as well. Everyone is welcome here. We want it to be this amazing cultural dynamic hub of community and collaboration. Thank you. It's been terrific talking to you today, Kylie. We wish you the very best over the coming years at South Everly. Thank, Thank you. you. The native plants that Kylie was just talking about are grown only a few stories up by Clarence Slocky at Jiwa. Let's go and have a chat to Clarence. How are you this morning, Clarence? I'm good, Will. It feels like not that long ago that we were walking in the loco sheds about creating the, the cultural landscape garden. It's amazing how far we've come. Well, it's been an interesting process too. The, you know, the, the beautiful garden that you see behind us, it's, uh, you know, it hasn't been that long, but it's been a long time in the planning, and particularly the fact that it's a community space. There's been a lot of people involved in, in the process, and the fact that we've got a, a community building that allows for local community groups, and in particular Aboriginal community groups, to be able to use use this space and then by extension learn about the uh, the plants and their significance to the local people. Very rarely do you have a, a rooftop that is accessible to the public. They're all native plants and they're all species that have been used by Aboriginal people for thousands of years. So it's a, it's a perfect showcase for what can be done with native plants but what can also be done in bringing back biodiversity and plant ecologies that can really benefit not only the environment but us as human beings and our mental and physical well-being. We're actually just came from a, a chat with uh, with Kylie and I know she's super excited about having the ingredients up here make a, make its way to, to, to the eatery. How, how much interest have you had from chefs like Kylie? There's been a big push towards using native ingredients. The plants themselves require, you know, they require less water and a lot of those foods, uh, you know, they kind of class them as superfoods because they have high vitamin contents, high in antioxidants, all the things that, that are really good for us but have not quite been uh, regulars on the plate. Clarence, it has been lovely chatting to you uh, this morning. No worries. Thanks, Will. We leave Clarence and next stop, it's time to visit Axel, CBA's first building which they moved into in the precinct in April 2019. Through the front door and up the escalators, you can see these beautiful atrium spaces which curves around, allowing the building to reveal itself to its occupants. 
We're here at Axel with Terry Ezra, General Manager of Design and Construct and Facilities Management for CBA. With this building, you cannot see where the fit-out ends and begins or when the base building ends and begins, and that's an absolute a testament to how our team's collaborated throughout. It, it is amazing when you trust your consultants um, to, to, to go away and come up with ideas on what, what is best for the project. Especially when you're moving into a new building and new precincts and you want to make the best and the most amazing workplaces for our people, to have a truly integrated experience is, is quintessential. Cementing ourselves in within this tech precinct and tech corridor is fundamental to our future success in this organisation. So for us, getting this right was incredibly important for ourselves and for our people and for the communities that they serve. How important is placemaking and activation to, to CBA? For us, this is an 18 by 7 precinct. And you cannot have an 18 by 7 precinct with only your office workers here. So without the community involved, without making this place 100% destinational for everybody to come and see what we've created, it just wouldn't create the successful place that we'll be creating in the future. But I think the other significant part for us as an organisation is understanding the richness and you know the indigenous history to this land as well. Mm. You've absolutely got the ingredients for an incredibly vibrant site which has got so much depth and character and yeah. cultural connection. You walk throughout this entire precinct you absolutely feel that cultural connection. Now we're going to go over and take a look at CBA's latest building to open, the Foundry. How did you humanise such a, a huge space? There was a big concern for us is how do we create intimacy in the space? And I think what we've done is we've done different intimacy in different spaces. So the response throughout this atrium area certainly required something more civic. So we worked with FJMT, your base building architects, and looked at a civic response, which you can see our speaker stairs and a much more of a concrete finish to it. What, what were the challenges that, that, from a fit out perspective that you have with a steel building versus a concrete building? Having that much of an earlier design process um, and making sure that we were very well resolved in understanding where all of our meetings were going to be so all of our services could go where they needed to go and I think that's sometimes where you limit the le level of flexibility you have um, in steel buildings. But I think the, the end outcome has been it, it very much reflects the industrial nature of this building and especially its proximity to the to the locomotive workshop. And incredibly important for us that our people again exist within this building and feel at home feel comfortable and feel that it actually reflects what they're doing and I think this is a perfect expression of what CBA would like to do within this you know, facility which is innovate, create the best possible experiences for our customers. You know, in any of the developments that we go to, we want to make sure that we've got so much diversity. You know, everybody has to be happy when they come to a CBA building with our retail, with our facilities that we're creating. You're standing here in the atrium, yeah. it's got yeah. amazing natural light. It's an incredible place to work in when your indoor environmental air quality and your light quality is amazing. And you know, it just makes people happier in the spaces that they work in. So we're here on Locomotive Street, the heart of the South Everly Precinct, outside this magnificent 130-year-old building for the Locomotive Workshop. This is where all the retail activation will take place. Why don't we go and take a look? So I'm here with Uma Springford, who has been leading this amazing project for Mervac. So Uma, tell us a bit about the project. What have you been up to here? For the past two and a half years, we've been involved in the redevelopment of this 130-year-old, very historically significant building. Uh, we are redeveloping 30,000 square metres, 22 odd thousand of commercial office and 8,000 square metres of retail. 
This building, everyone loves. The, the local community loves, the Heritage Council love. We grow to love it. We've lived in it for the last four years. And I get, I get the sense that there's a huge amount of passion um, from the community and the various stakeholders. You know, how did you harness all that to ensure that it was directed in a positive way? The one thing that you can say about this building is that everyone's passionate about it. At every point, we have brought in the community, we've brought in the heritage stakeholders, and we've asked for their opinion. The vision has been from the very start for Mervac that we keep with the manufacturing theme of the workshops. So the retailers, their offerings is very much to do with the manufacturing. So we've got the grounds of Alexandria coming in. They're going to be manufacturing coffee beans and we've got a gelato offering. The idea is to see how the, their products are actually made. And how have those tenants, have they embraced this, uh, this magnificent building? They've absolutely loved the, um, the look and feel. So they don't have to do much in terms of their fit out because the space speaks for itself. And so the, and the challenge is not to change any of that from a tenant's point of view, um, but to bring their own um, DNA and, and, and work that in with what's already here into the, into the workshop. South Everly has the most amazing, rich history, and we'd love you to come and check it out for yourselves. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed the tour, and we hope that you'll find the time one day to come out and actually see it in person. To find out more about what's going on down at South Everly, please visit our website, southeverlyatmervac.com.